My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. I live in a place where we experience on the average 20 tropical storms every year and recently we've had our sixth storm for 2021. And as you can imagine, it brought in heavy rains causing floods. In some parts of the city where I live, flood waters reached waste deep levels, cutting off roads to light vehicles. Well, in the Gospel, we contemplate the dramatic scene of a stormy sea and a human figure walking on the water approaching the apostles. Then the human figure at once spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. It's Jesus. Now the Lord presents them a choice. Either they get fixated on the storm or they focus on him. And he's not just saying to them, Be not afraid. He's saying, It is I, be not afraid. In other words, if they concentrate on him, they will not be afraid. This is also the same for us. If we experience the Lord's presence more deeply, more constantly, our fear will dissolve. This does not mean that there will be no more storms in life. Rather, the storms will not overwhelm us with fear. So we also have a choice to make. Either we focus on the storm or on Jesus. And this is where we look up to Peter's example also in this gospel episode. Upon hearing our Lord telling them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. After Jesus assured him, Peter got out of the boat. He began to walk on the water toward Jesus. Although, when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! When his faith momentarily deserts him, Peter begins to sink, and then it is the hand of Jesus that holds him up. Since he got out of the boat, Peter's eyes were on you, Lord. So he didn't worry too much because what took up all his attention was walking towards you, Lord. But suddenly, he focused instead on his own insecurity and lost sight of Jesus. His insecurity, which was understandable, because imagine yourself walking on the surface of water. But his insecurity collapsed into fear, and he began to sink. Imagine how it must have been like for Peter. Do you know what drowning looks like? We often think that a person who is drowning will thrash about in the water and yell, Help! Help! I'm drowning! In reality, they become almost paralyzed by fear and they become incapable of calling for help. I remember watching a video that showed how this happens. It showed a young girl of about 10 sitting on an inner tube float in the deep end of a wave pool surrounded by children and a few adults. When the girl adjusted herself on the tube, she fell off and she slipped to the bottom of the pool where the water was right at the top of her head. And you know, there was no thrashing about and she couldn't yell for help. Instead, subtly, her hands came just above the surface as if she were reaching for something. Thankfully, 
A lifeguard spotted her and within a few seconds had the, a flotation device under her. The most remarkable thing was that the people around her were oblivious to the fact that she was drowning. And when we go back to the gospel, it is to his credit we can say that as he begins to sink, Peter cries out, Lord, save me. This prayer by Peter is one of the most beautiful prayers we can all say, especially in our lowest moments, in our darkest moments. Lord, save me. Let's say it well, and let's say it often, to remind ourselves that Jesus is alongside us. He does not abandon us at crucial moments. Otherwise, we simply get overwhelmed and drown in life's difficulties. Of course, in this life, we can never have absolute security. But let's convert our insecurities into opportunities to foster our abandonment in God. Rather than obsessing about feeling sure of ourselves, let's ask for faith that will enable us to see beyond our own insecurity. When we are worried, doubtful, nervous, or when we see clearly our own insufficiency, let's grab the hand of Jesus as Peter did. Because in the presence of Jesus, the most terrifying of calamities turns to peace and serenity. His presence is his way of assuring us, I am here. The presence of Jesus is the solution to our fear and depression. We may never fully understand why evil and suffering happen in the world, but the awareness of his presence gives us inner peace and the strength to brave every storm. But yes, sufferings may continue, but we sense that with Jesus, we feel safe. Everything seems more manageable by His grace. So when we face a storm in life, we must have faith. But what does that really mean? Well, it means that we must know with a deep confidence that Jesus is in fact always with us. That if we place all our trust and hope in Him, He will never abandon us. That every storm will ultimately pass and that peace and calm will arise. So let's walk toward Jesus amid the waves, now, those waves that can take different forms. It may be a long and painful sickness, or the death of a loved one, or a damage caused by the shortcomings of people that we love, or a natural disaster, or a financial ruin, or maybe just an intense loneliness. And too often we turn our eyes to the winds and the waves and we allow fear and anxiety to dominate our lives. But every storm that we encounter could actually be for us an opportunity to trust our Lord on a new level, on a deeper level. So Lord, when the strength of the wind prevents us from seeing you, Give us more faith. We ask you for faith because with faith, we have more resources to cope with setbacks. With faith, we know that you can turn our setbacks in our favor. So when the going gets rough, may we not forget that Jesus never leaves us. Let's make use of these difficult situations to draw ever closer to him. And as we sail through the stormy sea of this life, let us also look up to our mother Mary, whose name means Star of the Sea. She will help us navigate through the stormy sea of this life. As the founder of Opus Dei, St. Jose Maria wrote, Have you never seen the mothers of this earth with their arms outstretched, 
following their little ones when without anyone's help, the little ones venture to take their first shaky steps. Well, you are not alone. Mary is beside you. And with Our Lady, we learn to trust in God. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.